Thank you for joining us on the show this week. My name is Samantha Zesai. Yeah, my name is Ramoy Philip, the wannabe DJ and knowledge dropper. <laughs> and this is masculinity. Yo, uh, I don't know if you know this. I went to a Mariah Carey concert once. I love how like Ramoy just omits facts from like last week you told me it was Lionel Richie and actually Mariah Carey was there. How could you forget that Mariah Carey was there? Yeah, was Boys to Men there too? That's not funny. We'll save the boys to men and the wondering about who else was at this magical show in Madison Square Garden that Ramoy went to. I'm getting hate stares right now. Yo, uh, (laughs) I think it's important to understand why we're here and why I'm here. I'm not on no pedestal. I'm trying not to be. I, I don't have an ivory tower to stand upon. But I am here speaking on this construct of masculinity because I believe embedded deep, uh, very deep in this construct and simulacra, there are some real negative effects that do men an injustice. We've already talked about men being victims of violent crime and how masculinity can impede men from being vulnerable and open. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, me and Sam, have been talking about masculine privilege and how that's almost hand in hand with masculinity and how that just fucking affects everybody on the gender spectrum. That's right. Uh, but I, I wasn't born with any masculine antibodies. I, I'm pretty masculine myself. I put on that mask regularly. (laughs) Um, but what's important about this conversation and this pod is that through these conversations, I personally get to learn, get to challenge these constructs that I've so naturally adopted and I get to check myself and I get to be a part of this process where we all get to have this conversation and be part of breaking it down and deconstructing what masculinity is and how it's affecting our culture. And I appreciate what you're saying because, you know, checking yourself is brave. You know, you could just be swimming in your bullshit all day long and be like, no, but I'm right. And it's like, well, are you? I like to think I'm right a majority of the time. And I like to tell (laughs) people I'm I'm right a majority of the time. Yeah. So without further ado, what are we talking about today? We're talking about a few things, including why men fight. I just want to tell everybody I have never been in a fight. But I really want to fight somebody. <laughs> of course and I you think do. it's because I was born with that nature. But I don't know. No, you were not. I mean, you were born with testosterone, which I feel like people use as an excuse and as a reason to be like, yeah, you know, like men like to fight because they have all this testosterone. They have like all this energy and this adrenaline that they need to like get out of their bodies. I'm like, that's cool. You can go on a run. Not to fight nobody. Anyway, um, so we're going to be talking about that. We're also talk- going to be talking about Seattle's mayor, Ed Murray. Ex-mayor now. Ex-mayor, that's right. There are actually five different men came out and accused him of sexual abuse when they had been teenagers. And so we're going to be talking about that. We're going to talk, just talking about like the 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 struggle for power and also the bravery of these, you know, grown men coming forth and like talking about their experience with somebody who is in power and that could potentially have like a lot of repercussions for their lives. So, and finally, we're going to be talking about where football and admitting you have an eating disorder collide. I hate the NFL and I love football, but I love this story even more. So I'm really excited about it. I'm excited about it too. I don't love the NFL. I'm still wondering why people watch it and don't just wait until basketball comes and on. And come back. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited. That's the only thing. Cause it's whack ass summer. That was never warm. Now we get October and we get NBA. And that's the only thing I'm excited about. about these one days. month left. Yo, I don't know if it's nurture or it's nature. I you know, it's, it's nurture. You know, it's nurture, <laughs> but I, I do. I swear to God, I have an almost innate sense as a masculine man. Uh, when I get angry, when I get tight, that I want to beat the shit out of someone. Like, look, ah, I just want to throw fists. <laughs> but mean, again, I've never know. been in a fight, so I don't really know what it feels like. I'm sure getting punched straight in the fucking jaw hurts like a motherfucker. And after I get my jaw punched in once, I never want to do it again. But still, I swear to God, that's innate. I'm like a fucking ape. I want to hit something. Oh, my God. First of all, I've been in a fight. It was a fake fight. It wasn't a real fight. You know, it was like oh, shout out to fake or real fights. That's a fight. Listen, it was he was a good friend because people were hyping him up like, yeah, you know, at three o'clock, you know, Samantha's about to whoop your ass. Da, da, da. And I was like sitting there like, oh, I didn't realize that I agreed to be in a fight with somebody who I thought was my friend. And then I went up to him and I fake need him in the in the in the stomach. And he bent over like a G of a friend that he was and pretended like he was hurt just so I could look amazing in front of all of our friends. Yeah, he's that's that's a good Yo, friend. That's amazing. That's a real man right there. That's Taking a real, an L right. for a woman. Dude, he just, was like 11. 
He has more ma- he has more manhood in his pinky finger than Donald Trump does in his all <laughs> of his hair. It's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Shots fired. Listen, wow. It's a real thing. So yeah, we're 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 talking about fighting, but the reason this comes up is there's a really cool article, um, think piece, uh, on The Guardian the other day. And it's talking about, you know, a liberal, educated man talking about this idea where he doesn't fight and he doesn't believe in fighting and he knows that we've kind of socially evolved uh, past the caveman mentality where men need to prove themselves by fighting. But yet he also still has this almost innate perverse sense to still want to fight. And he's trying to figure himself out within those two dueling ideas. So what's really interesting about this article for me is like, you know, there are moments where he's like, oh, my God, like, you know, I know better. Like I pack school lunches like I take, you know, I I cook food and like I take care of my kids. And like I'm like, the you know, the new age father. And then I'm also kind of obsessed with seeing violence being acted out in the form of a fight. Not necessarily because like. Because of, of, of anger or whatever, but it's like the thrill, right? I think that's what he describes. And also, I mean, I think that what I found the most fascinating about this article is that he struggles between who he is and how he does his life as somebody who's inherently not actually trying to fight someone and, like, the notion that he should want to fight somebody, right? And, like, I think one of the p- parts that's the most interesting about the article is when he talks about this right a passage that he never actually went through because he never fought anyone as a young man. And so now I guess there's almost like a weird factor that's missing from his context as a man, because he's never gone through like this rite of passage of like beating the shit out of somebody or getting hit the shit beat out of him. Yeah. But let's backtrack. Like I jokingly mentioned like, what, what am I an ape? But like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we look at science and we look at animals like, males show their dominance and show if they can be the alpha male by fighting like exerting physical violence so how are we not different from that i mean i feel like there's a humanity right that we get to have as humans i mean i know that sounds redundant but like i think that this like innate sense of like male female and like other animals do this like i get that argument but i think at the same time that like when we look, really look at the differences between men and women and the similarities between men and women, there's actually a lot more overlap than there are differences. I went through a period where I was like researching testosterone, right? And like one of the things that I read was that basically the social context that that person is living in, is living in yields to excuse me, creates an environment where more of that testosterone can show up. Example, you know, if you are somebody who has like a lot of testosterone, a lot of adrenaline or whatever, but all day long, your job is to like go and file books in the library, then your testosterone is not going to come out in the in, like, like aggressively. It's going to come out in a different way. You know, on the other side of that, if you're working in construction where you have to like drill and like hit shit, then of course your adrenaline is going to be channeled purely physically. I employed this idea of pseudoscience to make my case, which we talked about last time about how you said James Damore did did the same thing. And it's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's true. And there's also the idea that this experiment of civilized society, right? We have these other tools at at our disposal that allow us to talk and communicate. And that's where it becomes problematic because it doesn't necessarily agree with masculinity. Masculinity isn't, doesn't allow men to talk and be honest and open and vulnerable and it puts them in a prison of repression and suppression but then there is this idea of i still want to fight and what and i I need to fight and i need to hit something i need to hit somebody and just throw fists right but is that actually science is that who i am innately or is it kind of more that nurture thing where it's something that's been fetishized and conditioned in me through all the TV I watch, all the movies I watch. I mean, I grew up in the 90s. I love Chuck Norris. I love Jean-Claude Van Damme. Me too. They beat the shit out of people randomly all the time. I know. Well, I mean, I think I think one thing that you're pointing to is, is like, is that innate or is that, you know, taught? Like, I think it's human to be pissed off and to want to hit something. 
you know, I think that there are plenty of people out there whose like first instinct is to like want to beat the shit out of something, even if they're not a man. You know, why don't we move right along to uh, to some more talk about dudes and ways that masculinity gets expressed. Right. So we're talking about, you know, Mayor Ed Murray or former Mayor Ed Murray, who, you know, has been accused by five different men of of sexual abuse. You know, and this was in his past. This was like thinking like in the 1970s or something like that, because this is when these men were teenagers yeah i mean for more context he was the former mayor as of like two days ago of seattle but he was also served in like washington state politics for 20 some odd years so he's well known in that area and this is the pacific northwest which is very liberal and he Mm -hmm. serves as a democrat and you know unfortunately this could be the story that we talk about where it's a man in power who abuses that power and his masculinity to take and take in this case from young boys at the time but I don't want to spend too much time there because I think there's a more powerful story there that we really need to talk about and needs to come out in the popular discussion. And that is of these then boys, now men who are coming forward and saying that this man sexually abused me. This man molested me. Yeah. You don't hear that often in the common conversation. It's not, it's very taboo actually to be a man and come forward and be honest. Not only just the honesty, but what, the details of that honesty that are served by that honesty and that is sexual abuse and sexual violence one thing that is really awesome about this is like you know to your point about like you know them being brave and coming forward you know i think it really is a testament to vulnerability being powerful unlike people tend to think about vulnerability vulnerability being a weakness like this is really like you know, to be able to come forward with all the notions that we have about masculinity and men and like the way that they're supposed to conduct themselves and the way that they're supposed to like process, um, you know, their experiences. I, f- I feel like it speaks volumes to these guys bravery. I mean, what I guess what makes it so brave, right? That's that's kind of the question we have to ask ourselves. And so we've talked about the conversation and the coming forward and the honesty. Um, but another other facets of that is like, okay, if you've been sexually assaulted or molested as a woman, that's kind of, that's, that's fucked up, right? But women receive kind of the sex, right? Men don't receive the sex, men give the sex. So if you receive it, then uh, you're weak. So, I mean, it's all these facets coming together that make it a prison, almost a suicidal net for men who have been sexually abused. And that's why it isn't talked about so often. And that's not why it's, or that's why it's not part of the conversation as much as it needs to be. But as we talked with Yuval Moses in an earlier uh, episode, one out of six men is sexually abused. It's not one out of 10. It's not one out of 20. It's one out of six. It's fucking crazy. But we don't hear that. We don't. Why don't we We hear that? Like we don't. And I mean, I feel like this, This is so, it's so sad. What I really am seeing about this is just like how these guys, these five guys who were brave enough to actually come forth in the media and talk about like their, 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 their abuse and their trauma with this man. You know, we know from our conversation with Yuval that they don't have a lot of other, they don't have a lot of places to go. Like, they're more likely to be turned away if they were to go and, 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 and seek help. They're more likely to be turned away than they are to actually be accepted and to have services that can turn to to address that trauma, you know? So for these people to come out into, you know, into the light and say something is amazing. And I mean, we haven't even talked about Jerry Sandusky, right? Like the case of, I mean, Penn State. Mm-hmm. The coach over at Penn State, I mean, he was abusing boys for 30 years. And I mean, this is this is if you saw the movie Spotlight, it was kind of a similar thing where all these priests were abusing young boys all throughout Boston. And it was so hard for the boys then turned men to come out and be honest about it because it's so taboo. It's so unsafe as a man to come out and say, I've been sexually abused. One of the things like I think what you're pointing to is like really brilliant because it's like. You know, if we actually take a look at the, na- the 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 level of violence that men go through, even in like spousal relationships, which I think we'll probably expand more on in a different episode. But, 
there is actually a very large number of intimate partner violence where men are the recipients, like the victims of the violence, and they can't come forward because then it's like, oh, so you, you know, in in heterosexual relationships, because then it's like, oh, so you let your wife beat you up? Oh, so you let, you you know, you you know, you let your, your girl, like, you know, get you? And it's like, what are you You're supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? You're trapped. You can't say anything. Violence and abuse is wrong, no matter who's doing it and no matter who's receiving it. And I think that, like, when we categorize, like, who gets compassion, who gets, you know, um, reprimands, you know, we're just perpetuating the system. Like, I think, like, you know, a couple people that I talked to you about, like, you know, starting this podcast or whatever and, like, talking about how it's important for men to also have spaces, to, you know, to get compassion and all of that. Like, do we need something else for men? And I'm like, this is not something else for men. This is something that men don't have. And if they did, it would probably impact the amount of violence that's out there. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know, we know that there is a link between victim and perpetrator. We know that to say that it's just like, oh, this is like something else that like men get or whatever is just really it's short sighted and it's and it's positional and oppositional in a way that it, it just it's kind of productive. It's the opportunity to celebrate stories like this and find the fact that there is something to celebrate in something so tragic and sad that and point to the fact that in certain situations, men because of masculinity are put in a position where they aren't allowed to be human. But when we can celebrate the bravery of individuals who are kind of pioneering and coming out and being honest about the violence that was enacted upon them, that is something we can celebrate. And that is something that needs to be a part of the conversation. It's bravery like that, that we definitely want to be talking about. I know. It's so great. You know what else is brave? Throwing random shit at Samantha and having her riff giving her hot takes. Oh, I was like, I was, I, I thought you meant like actually throw things at me. And I was like, wh- why? Why? Are we-? I mean, we are in a violence kind of show. <laughs> right I was like, but wait, wait, no. It is. It's pilot season. If you guys haven't, t- can't tell already. I love television. TV is great. TV is great. Uh, I miss Power. I miss Game of Thrones. And when I say it's great, there's also a lot of bad shit on TV and a bunch of random shit. And it's it's fall pilot season, so that means there's a lot of stuff gonna be thrown out uh, at the fan. We're gonna see what sticks and what uh, drops off. And a lot of these have some uh, interesting masculine intonations, and we'll see what Sam thinks. This is very exciting. So the. The first pilot uh, I want to talk about, I'm going to read you uh, the little log line for it. The show is called SEAL Team. Follow the lives of elite Navy SEALs as they train, plan, and execute the most dangerous high-stakes missions our country can ask. So we just watched the trailer, and it's Angel from Buffy the Vampire Slayer going to slay vampires, meaning brown Arabic Muslim dudes. (laughs) Ha! Well, well played. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, this seems like everything that I've seen before in the sense that you know that there's only one character who's going to have any type of depth. You know what I'm saying? You've got, like, him. He's, like, you know, cisgendered, heterosexual, white guy who's, like, tall, built, strong. He's going to be the leader, right? Everybody else is supporting his existence and like whatever facet they show of that of of the supporting cast like that's all they get so this next one is called the mayor after an outspoken idealistic rapper runs for office as a publicity stunt and actually gets elected he surprises everyone including himself, when he has a natural knack for the job and slowly transforms City Hall. First of all, I just want to say that I hope that Chance the Rapper runs for mayor and wins because this is basically what's going on here. Um, And second, I mean, I think, like, it's cute. It's like a cute story. I do think that it does reinforce, I'm going to be the dude, I'm going to stand in front, you know, I'm going to go ahead and lead this, and then I'm going to have all my women behind me supporting like what I'm what I'm doing right like it's like wh- why can't the women just run for mayor I mean it's a really cute show I mean I'm gonna watch uh, it we're all gonna watch it Definitely. Hey, it looks funny and smart and you know 
know, this, I feel like, you know, when we see things like this, it's like we can only deal with like one inequality at a time. You know what I'm saying? It's like, OK, well, you know, people of color, we're going to deal with that. Then we're going to deal with women. Then we're going to deal with like, you know, people of like different like, you know, gender identities. Then we'll deal with sexual orientation. I mean, it's just like, you know, why not just swing out? The next one is called Alex Inc. Based on the podcast of the same name, the project follows Alex Schumann, Zach Braff, an inquisitive journalist, husband, and father who dives headfirst into the brave new world of entrepreneurship when he quits his stable job and starts his own business. Look, I love Zach Braff, man. I mean, who didn't love him and Donald Faison on Scrubs? Like, they were just fucking, love the that show. fucking best duo love ever. That show. And so look, much. everybody likes to talk mad shade on fucking Garden State, but everybody knows when that movie first came out, we were like, I love this movie. I don't really know why or what it's about, but I love this movie. And then five minutes later, everybody was like, oh, I hate that movie. Blah, Zach Braff sucks. I love That's Zach exactly Braff. how I felt. I mean, mine is a Zach Braff sucks. I mean, I always thought he was great, but Garden State, at first I was like, yeah. Then at first I was like, I don't, I don't know why this movie exists. Um, but anyway, I mean, the podcast movie, which Alex Inc., it's cute. I'm here for all of like the multicultural situation of the Shout movie. Shout out to mixed families. Ex- exactly. The kids are super cute. I think for if anything, I'm probably just going to watch it for the kid because I think that like the little boy has like is bringing new sides of masculinity, you know, that that you know, there's like a freedom that he has, I think, that his father doesn't really get to to enjoy, right? I mean, He's got to shoulder everything. He spent the 401k, which, I mean, I mean, his first of all, his wife would have been his head off. I don't know how she was so calm. I mean, maybe she wouldn't have. Anyway. But, um, yeah, he's, like, the one shouldering responsibilities. He's the one who's, like, taking action and, like, taking the lead in the family, you know? It's 2017. There's no reason why she can't do that. You know what I mean? But, like, the show is, like, no, no, no. It's all on him to figure out how this family is going to survive after he decided to walk out of his job. And it's like, it just doesn't have to be like that. It just doesn't. I just wanted to talk about this because it's about people starting their own <laughs> podcast company. And shout out to us womp, starting our womp. own podcast. <laughs> hey, <Hey-o. laughs> So earlier we, we talked about Penn State. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, Penn State just can't seem to not be in the news. Uh, but there's this dude, he's actually the kicker, he was the kicker uh, for the Penn State football team, the Nittany Lions, and he used to lay on a hell of a hit. Like, if you can YouTube, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of football hitting, but Jesus, man, Joey Julius laid down some uh, incredible hits. Or part of this uh, story and the reason he was able to lay such big hits is because he's a big guy. Like, and that bigness is really important because last fall, Joey uh, admitted to having severe body image issues that correlated directly with a eating disorder called binge eating disorder. It's very surprising. And I feel like the first thing that came to mind when you said that was that, or when you told me about this, was that I rarely ever hear about eating disorders in men, ever. I feel like it's like one of those, another one of those things that's like strictly attributed to women. And again, I mean, it's like, you know, if you have an eating disorder as a guy, who do you talk to? And it's like crazy, too, because it's like it's not like men aren't saturated with images of just like, you know, ripped, cut up like, you know, E.G. Selba's and Brad Pitt's and Chadwick Boseman's and like, you know, The Rock and like, you know, all kinds of like sexy fineness or whatever. You know what <laughs> Samantha I mean? Samantha's like, salivating right now. I mean. I mean, I used to say this, like, real talk, Brad Pitt really screwed this up because, like, in the 80s, you could be ugly Tom Hanks or, like, ugly as death Billy Crystal and still be the hero of a movie and, like, still get the girl. Sucked up. Tom Hanks is cool, dude. And this asshole gardener comes around named Brad Pitt and just screws everything up. And now, like the rest of the world, men have to look at the television screen and see this reflection of what peak muscly, abby masculinity is, and we compare ourselves against that now. However, is it talked about? Is it explicitly a part of the conversation in our society about how men may feel inadequate or may feel inferior and could even possess body image issues or eating disorders? No, it's not. <laughs> and um, And I think 
Actually, one of the things that, that I just thought of right now is like, okay, so women actually have been dealing with this for a while. This whole body image of like, you know, you need to have like a small waist and like big boobs and like, you know, have beautiful hair and like look like Megan Fox or like, you know, or, or Megan Good. You know what I'm saying? And like, I think Sofia Vergara, I mean, I could keep going. I wonder what, what kind of like what that would create in society if collectively we were talking about like body image issues right because I feel like when we're talking about women it's like okay what really happens when we started talking about bin- like like eating disorders is that a whole industry emerged right it's like you know dieting and like dieting correctly and like nutrition and like you know making sure that you're healthy and like living your best life or whatever but you still look good and can still fit in that dress you know what I'm saying and like I wonder if, you know, as we start to talk a little bit more about like the eating disorders that men have, if it's just it's going to be another way of creating a new like page of consumerism or if we're actually going to be able to deal with it as a society and actually like take a look at like, okay, men also deal with this. Let's give them some compassion. Well, I think that's already happened. If we look at like gym memberships and creatine and muscle supplements, like whether we know it or sure. not, protein powder, that, sure. that is sure, sure. kind of an affectation of what we're talking about here. I mean, whether it's explicit or not, men, men value their strength and their body. Sure. But a lot of that is directly related to how they're seen and their body appearance issues and their unfortunate case of not being able to love themselves no matter what they look like or no matter what muscles they possess or lack right i mean this yeah. was so much the effect with joey in the sense that he 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 had to step away from football he had to get into rehab and he also admitted to being suicidal like it drove him to a point where he wanted to take his own life and so what is what is what is what are body image issues and you're sh- you shame yourself on your own appearance, right? And what is binge eating disorder? Binge eating disorder is where you have a very unhealthy relationship with food and you constantly, no matter hunger or, you know, kind of full, you're going to keep stuffing your face. And there's so many variables that go into all of this and it could come down to nurture, like Sam would say. Or I mean, doesn't it? It could be a, a disease or some sort of genetic situation that also contributes, right? That doesn't matter. What does matter is that these things do exist and these things affect not just women, not just feminine people on the gender spectrum, but this affects men, especially hypermasculine men. What makes it more problematic is the fact that they there is no space for conversations, vulnerability. I, I love, you know, this episode. I feel like we're really getting to see people who are like stepping out and like creating, like be, being leaders in creating a world of compassion for men. One of the, the things that I want to touch on having to do with this is like this hyper strength that men are asked to to show on a consistent basis is highly is is so detrimental that men are three times more likely to commit suicide than women. And it's just crazy that we don't talk about that. It's crazy that we can live in a country where one in eight men commit suicide and it's just like, okay. I mean, what's staggering to make it even more kind of apparent is that, sure, women women absolutely suffer from eating disorders. But when you look at binge eating, um, according to the National Eating Disorders Association, approximately 40% of those that suffer with binge eating disorder are male. It's not 10%. It's not 5%. It's huh. not even 25%. It's not. It's more than a quarter. It's almost half of the population that suffers from this disorder are men. You know, and like, what if we actually looked at eating disorders or any kind of like issues that people are having as like a human issue rather than like a gendered issue? You know, then we would actually have us have an opportunity to transform it to make a difference where that's concerned right but i think that the status quo of like perpetuating this like consumerist system like needs those things to be divided right because then you can market then you can like make money off of it right so it's just it's like where is the answer right it's like there's like compassion obviously but there's also i feel like you know a systematic there's a systematic like machine that we have to deal with. When it comes to like that systematic 
machine that you talk about or that construct. I think one of the things we have to talk about is the idea that masculinity, how does masculinity um, keep this train moving forward, right? And one way is it enacts this rule, this law that men have to be just built strong, full of self-control, and they have to repress. It almost goes hand in hand with their physical strength as their emotional strength to just stay strong, to repress, and to be able to control all their bodily kind of issues or their mental capacities, right? And control everything around them. So if they can't, if men can't control, don't have control of their eating habits, what does that mean? That means you're not masculine. And it's it's things like that that chip away at a person's kind of individuality and their, their ability to be themselves. And that's what's and soul. So, so frustrating because these constructs, this mask of masculinity streamlines people person's individual experiences into one codified way that they believe they should live when pseudo structure of society when in reality we all have our individual experiences and we're all going through all all sorts of issues and we yet we can't find the humanity in one another to do so i mean look i haven't been formally diagnosed uh but i easily have body image issues uh so a lot of times i've looked in the mirror and been i hated what i saw uh you know, comes from a family that had really um, weird ideas and weird kind of relationship with food, and therefore it kind of downloaded upon me and so on and so forth. Um, And it's been difficult. Like, it feels like I'm an alien at times when I have body image issues, but I feel like I can't be part of the conversation or I can't be open about that. Women have the eating disorders, not men, right? But actually what's kind of funny is that when I am honest about it, when I've told close friends about it or people that I know that, you know, I have, like, I feel I have binge eating, like I can't stop eating and I stuff my face and it's almost emotional more than it's physical or that I don't love the way that I look and I get really insecure about that. People are actually really understanding. Men, women, anybody in the spectrum, like very empathetic. So there is humanity out there, but it's just so conditioned within our system of society and we're so afraid that we'll be alienated. I really, um, first of all, I appreciate you saying, sharing that. And I I think that the point of alienation is so, it's so true on both sides, both on the side of obviously the person who's like going through it and on the side of like the person who wants to be there for another, but is dealing with like a society in a context where that's not necessarily accepted, right? And so then, you know, Nobody ever wants to stand out. <clears throat> I mean, it's it's interesting. Like, we've had this thread, this whole conversation about bravery. And, you know, what is also interesting about bravery, like, bravery has always been associated with masculinity, but this is kind of a new bravery, right? So we get to flip this whole construct of masculinity and re- redefining what bravery means about what bravery means to be masculine or vice versa, right? So in the, in the beginning, we were talking about um, what it means to fight and what it means to actually be a man and want to fight or not fight and understand that we have other tools at our disposal that we can use to work together and that it you can be vulnerable, right? And you can talk. And that it is okay to be masculine, be a man, and use your fucking words, right? Mm-hmm. We've also talked mm-hmm. about how brave it is to come out as a man or anybody on the gender spectrum and come out admitting that Some of your humanity was stolen because of sexual violence, right? Um, Especially towards men, but how hopefully more and more men will come out and talk about it because it is so prevalent, and yet for so long it has been ignored. And lastly, we talked about Joey Julius and Penn State and football and masculinity and intense aggression, right? But how even the biggest football player can be affected by something so human as hate and hate for oneself and how body image issues and eating disorders don't just affect women, but affect men almost as equally as women. Um, And hopefully we can create a safe, brave space for men to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, if you have anybody in your life who suffers from um, a disorder or anybody in your life who has been abused and they are scared to come out and say something or if you don't if you don't know that you have something in your life really be the space of compassion for the people in your life really be the space such that 
people will feel comfortable and you can be a source of contribution and of compassion for the people in your life because it's hard to know what people are dealing with out there. Our society really doesn't allow for people to speak up about what's going on, right, outside of this um, social construct. So uh, please tell us what you think. Thank you for listening. We really believe in this conversation and we're we're – uh, we're really committed to having that, not just be uh, myself and Ramoy, you know, in some random studio somewhere, some cold apartment at the Brooklyn Library doing our thing, but really having this conversation like like trailblaze so that people will feel heard, understood, and most importantly, so that people can feel safe out there. So um, we can start to call this construct out for what it is and really start to be um, more human toward one another. So... I hope that, you know, this podcast and and our conversations have been inspiring some thoughtful conversations for you and yours. Again, like Sam said, it's cool that we get to talk about this uh, on two mics in some cool space and record it for you guys to hear. But what's more important is that this conversation gets spread throughout and that we do create safe places and bravery can be uh, celebrate and enabled, right? So how do we do that? Well, share this podcast. This isn't selfless promotion. We really believe in this and we believe that we are just tools a part of a greater conversation so share this podcast we're we're posting this stuff sam is posting this stuff on our facebook and on our twitter and she's constantly putting up the new episodes when they're out and ready the way you can find those episodes is follow us on facebook or like us on facebook right because right when sam posts that on facebook you'll be the first to see it so you can follow us at masculinity podcast that's masculinity with a k all one word and also on twitter we're at masculinity pod um, don't forget your at symbol. And again, give us some likes. Give us some love. If you follow us on iTunes, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Stars, stars, stars. Um, tell people. Email your father. Email your brothers, your uncles, your cousins, or your moms. Because, man, moms are the best. So email to mom. The They'll best. tell everybody. Shout out to my mom. She's the best. I love her so much. So help us keep this conversation going. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for listening. Uh, my name is Samantha Zessi. My name is Ramoy George Philip the first and Mariah Carey concert lover. That ain't right. Anyway, and this has been Masculinity. Thank you for listening. Peace. <laughs>